Petar. Petar, kaj ti radiš tu? Plača opusti. Tu, kol. Da, možemo. in many, many countries. 
we believe that Greece is suffering today. This is why, this is why, uh, if Greece should have, if, if Greece had to produce, she had to produce its own rights, and if Greece didn't have an opponent such as China, it will not be suffering today. So, actually, and moreover, the, what this creates, in our opinion, is that, is that a, like a, a more peaceful environment, which there will be no br brutalism because they're neighboring each other too, which my second speaker will tell you more about. So, ladies and gentlemen, our problem today actually is that poverty exists because dominance exists. Poverty exists because monopoly exists. If, the, if, if China, if US didn't actually produce everything which all the world needed, then all the, the rest of the world will not be suffering because they will be earning some money too. So, and, uh, so... Point. Yes, please. Do you truly believe that the rest of the world is suffering and only two nations in the world are actually not as successful? Okay, that, that, that was just an example of him. Okay, that, that's the tree. But the thing is that, like, basically, like, eight, at the ten, eight of ten out of, of, like, of the world is basically suffering from poverty, suffering from these, these things. Not all countries are, are Canada, like, uh, or, the, or the US, okay? We have countries in the Middle East which are suffering, we, we have countries in Africa which are suffering, which I will tell more about why we are actually saving them in this case. So, why is it very bad for these countries to be dependent on one single country? Ladies and gentlemen, these countries are not only economically dominant, but, but in this case, they're politically dominant too. So what happens? Dominant too. What happens is that these countries are so dependent on that one country, which is the best and the cheapest at producing that, they will always be. The thing is that they will always, they will, that country will always have a power of a power on that small country. So what does this mean, ladies and gentlemen? This means that the, the people of that country actually do not have any democratic power, uh, power, and that. The, the, the country which is the monopoly has the dominant power. This is why when U.S. gets in Iraq today, no one can say anything about it. When U.S. destroyed destroy Iraq today and takes all their resources, no one can say anything about it because they're so afraid of hurting their relations with, their relations with the U.S. Because this means that they, they, they are basically done too. Done too. So, the thing with, so, so there is actually a very big risk they're taking today. So, what happens? They, what they don't understand is dependence causes risks too. So let me ask you, what happens when a sudden crisis in China happens? Let me tell you, we will all be done. We will no, have no chance. All, all those countries which are very, very dependent will suddenly crash. And uh, it's just as Russia producing the, the oil oils. But, but now, okay, we know that there are some risks. But in our case, let me give you a corporate analysis. In, in this case, when you're with your neighboring countries, you are more likely to protect your neighboring country and and actually help your neighboring country. Make because if that country collapses, then you 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 will be done too. But in this case, you are less likely to corrupt uh, because that country has no uh, no very big uh, difference in poverty than you. And actually, in it when, so let's compare the risks in regional. If okay, let's say that there actually has been a corruption. In, in regional, the, the corruption will happen in only two countries uh, because of that the, that block was too small. But let's assume that such a country as uh, the U.S. and China had the crisis. That would mean that the harm will be to the whole world, which is actually in comparison we believe that we have much much more harms in this case. So uh, we believe that it is not a risk to take at all. The thing is that China can do it by itself already. Nevertheless, but why these countries, as my, uh, as the PR said, are not producing it, is that they don't have to. They, it's cheaper, but when they have to uh, actually do it in my region, they will actually have more incentives to find more other resources, to look after itself. They don't have any reason to look at, uh, to, to actually uh, take care of themselves because they don't have, they, they cannot find the incentive to in this case because that power, that power is so dominant. And the, the thing is that this, what we see in this case is that that country it rules basically the whole world, not only by well, uh, economic means, even by cultural means. They, 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 no one can do anything about them basically ruling the world. There is no, no regional democracy left. There is no regional wanting left. No society is, in this case, important other than that one single democracy. Monopoly. So in this case, this is why we believe that this is the solution and we should take the risks no matter what. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your speech and I call now the first
Mr. Speaker of the Opposition. Just a second. <coughs> Gentlemen, there, there has been a great mischaracterization from team proposition. They have given you subs uh, substantive points that uh, come with no analysis, that come with no uh, true examples, and their uh, only uh, argument, uh, their arguments are only based on premise. In this speech, I will show you this through two points of rebuttal. The first one being about their first substantive about local business and how, in fact, in their world, it goes even worse than it is. Uh, and secondly, I will introduce our uh, second point of rebuttal: how even uh, the wars they are talking about that will happen are going to happen in fact in their world because there is no interest in fact uh, to uh, keep peace in their world. So uh, then after that I will introduce our first substantive about more money for poor nations, the nations they want to help and this is something only that comes from team opposition. Secondly I will introduce our second substantive about comparative advantage in our world and how in fact everyone benefits in our world from uh, free trade and my second speaker will introduce Reduce uh, our third substantive about reducing the likelihood of conflicts in our world, and this is exclusive for our world, of course. So, before we move on to the points of rebuttal, I'd like to take the stance of team uh, opposition in this debate because we think team proposition has been, hasn't been in, uh, clear enough. Uh, so, uh, firstly, we think that the team that wins is the team that proves <coughs> that in their world uh, the uh, the economy is more equi equitable for everyone, meaning more countries can often into, uh, into uh, trade, meaning a more fair playing ground for uh, for every country, including poor nations. And this is our first value we need to represent, and I will show you this through the points of rebuttal as uh, and substantive points. And secondly, we think uh, an, an initiative that we need to do is help these poor nations that are doing uh, worse, and this is what we're doing through free trade. We are evening the playground, as I already stated. Moving on to the, uh, the, the first point of rebuttal about how local business goes worse, worse on team uh, proposition. So, uh, they give you examples of Turkey and Germany and we see no problem with them. These are, uh, in fact, states that are doing really well. They're investing money and they're making money and giving money to these four nations and we see no problem with that. So, uh, uh, first, uh, and one question to team uh, proposition because they haven't clarified how will these poor countries, these non-dominant countries, uh, make money in their world? World. How will they make money if you cut away all of their buyers and make it uh, simply to their exclusive trading block? This cannot happen because Turkey cannot uh, uh, cannot even uh, survive by this because if uh, we take their example because uh, Greece and the other countries surrounding them don't have enough money to invest in them, meaning th that these nations get even less money than they do on our side and this is simply why their local business even fails even more and their uh, whole uh, first substantive falls at this, but more about that in our uh, uh, substantives. So secondly, uh, about their war. So they say war is more likely on our side, but this is simply not true. They, they give you no analysis of this, but we say war will happen in their world because there is no interest to in fact keep peace. These are trading blocks that do not depend and coexist on each other, meaning they're independent, meaning you have no incentive to keep peace. You only have the incentive if you don't have money to a trade to attack the other trading block and make it worse for them gaining their profit and this is why their second substantive does not uh, does not stand as well now that I have rebutted their case and left it uh, left it on the floor I would like to move to our substantive so firstly free trade is better than uh, uh, trading blocks because it will lead to better deals for these poor nations they are valuing so in the status quo we think uh, the situation that uh, the, the uh, that is uh, the global economy doesn't really function entirely as free trade, so we cannot look at, at the stance of opposition. Firstly, we believe
believe that these nations uh, uh, that buy, that uh, the buyers, they talk about the uh, USA or uh, Europe, are in fact in powerful trading blocks, for example, EU and NAFTA, and this has to in fact change, and they overpower uh, these poor nations because they, because they make unfair regulations and they uh, misprice in trading. And we believe this is not great trading, no thank you, and this does not, uh, and in our world, this does not happen for sure because you won't be able to make uh, unfair regulations because uh, because uh, trading of goods will be completely free. So if we have free exactly. trade, we we will elevate this this balance of power between uh, concentrated blocks with external protectionism, which gives them an uh, them an edge uh, and as compared to the undeveloped countries, which have a lesser a starting position to begin with. Let me analyze that even more. If they offer a good a uh, 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 product and there is a demand for it, the price should be based on the supply and the demand and not the unfair regulation and this is something that only happens on team proposition. For, uh, so uh, even if the prices are cheap, it is based on supply and demand, so these are as well not unfair deals. So three benefits from this. Firstly, I will explain uh, how if we have free trade money, uh, it will go uh, from rich nations to the poor. So we have a very strong, uh, already proven through that prices will be much fairer in free trade on the side of proposition based on not bad deals, but the, uh, on the basis of supply and demand. This will make it uh, so that more money goes from rich nations to poor nations, providing a mechanism for them to develop even further, which is exclusive for our side. And there is less capital and more is lost on things such as tar uh, tariffs and trade mispricing in team opposition. Uh, proposition. There will be more capital coming into the country to invest for their economy and this will lead to more job op opportunities and more production in this state. This capital can be used to develop our branches of the economy, making the country more able to respond to the changes of the market. Second point is the foreign investment. On uh, team proposition, uh, uh, the, these poor nations are stuck with the capital they already have, which is they uh, uh, ex uh, which they explain that is almost non-existent, meaning they can't handle themselves within their regional trading blocks, meaning this only goes worse, and this is where their first substantive falls. Thirdly, ideas and uh, these uh, point, uh, these uh, patents that come from these sure. richer nations that are putting money into these poor nations are, this is not only monies, but ideas travel as well. Uh, for example, the idea of human rights and democracies as we see in India and this is where their case completely falls. So we should oppose the motion because it will uh, lead to better economies in poor nations. Moving on to the second substantive about comparative advantage. So free trade is uh, better than a regional trading bloc because it will make all nations have more competitive products in the world market. In trade blocks, nations can't uh, have specialized production because within their trading bloc they don't have a wide enough market nor a demand for these specific goods they are selling. Uh, so within the trading block, uh, they are not likely to specialize in something. And the most impactful is the, for the states we value most, for these poor nations, because these nations have a certain thing and uh, they simply don't have the incentive enough to uh, sell it to their nations, meaning there is not a, hi a high demand enough within the trading block they are proposing to uh, for these countries to make investment. This is bad because they can't capitalize on their native advantages of the state and others will uh, uh, have to invest in less effective branches of the economy because uh, this will lead to even worse economy in these, uh, in these uh, nations that need this economy. So we give you the example from uh, Sri Lanka that has cinnamon and uh, they and they're uh, making a lot of money from that. In free trade, they will be able to specialize, uh, which leads to uh, two benefits. Firstly, they can ma maximize the profit for themselves. So they're selling the best pot possible product their nation can have, uh, that can command, and this will make much more money for them. And free trade means a wider market, so more investment. And secondly, the best benefit is the best and cheapest product. So every nation gets the best and cheapest products for every state. Uh, and this is because, uh, and, uh, because of this. Free trade enables wider markets based on states exploiting their uh, uh, comparative advantages with leads to more profit economic benefits, so the motion should fall. <laughs>
first uh, came with an assumption that these uh, big uh, countries are going to help the small countries, they're not going to exploit them, and uh, the trade is going to be formed with a very peaceful way, and they're going to try to uh, spread human rights. But actually now, today, it's not the case. Uh, and I'm going to present to you my arguments about uh, how it creates unity and how it spreads peace uh, as a global impact. But first I want to give some um, rebuttals. So um, they said that the economy is better for every country. But uh, okay, uh, so actually they opened the debate that, uh, saying that economy is our primary uh, thing in this debate and we should debate on economy. Okay, we think that economy is also a very big point, but you can neglect, neglect other actors in uh, this debate. For example, spreading human rights or um, giving, uh, spreading good messages like peace. Uh, and actually, uh, they said, uh, how, did, how do these countries make money? Okay, so uh, we say that the resource will be produced and earned because uh, there is a trade block. Because the, uh, the blocks, the countries in the block help each other. And uh, they said, Greece doesn't have money, so um, how, how do these countries help each other? But actually, in the first place, the, uh, in the first place, Greece was exported by other countries, other big countries. That's why Greece doesn't have any money. Uh, so we should uh, we shouldn't uh, continue doing this global trade because uh, other countries we see that today other co countries exploit weak countries and they talked about the European Union uh, but actually the European Union is uh, a regional community so it uh, spreads peace which I'm uh, going to talk about in my argument more uh, and they also said more money from poor uh, regions go to rich, uh, rich rich uh, regions, but uh, it, we see that the uh, rich, rich, rich regions don't have any incentive to help the poor regions. And it doesn't no. happen in the status quo due to power exploit with the capital. And they couldn't prove that, how uh, these countries have incentive to help the uh, other um, poor countries. And uh, they said that the more capitals will go to uh, poor countries and they will come and invest. But they. They, first of all, they didn't tell us why these countries have incentives to go and help the other countries. Why don't uh, they just exploit, which is in this case, uh, we, see that in, uh, we see that globally these bigger and uh, more powerful co countries go and exploit uh, the weaker ones. They don't uh, help them, they don't uh, make investments, and they didn't actually prove uh, why do they have these incentives. And they did a compar uh, comparative advantage. They said um, there are more competitive products, there are some specialized products, uh, and they, these other regions can't demand for them. The but actually, they there? can't specialize uh, in the status quo either, because they are exported. Because, um, as I said, the, the resources are exported, there are no specialized uh, products. Even if they are specialized products, they are used by the country which uh, exploits the other one. And they said that these countries are trying to spread human rights, but now in the status quo, we clearly see that these countries don't have an incentive to spread human rights. They are act actually exploiting human rights. Uh, and they are using the country for their own benefit. Uh, and my first speaker explained that, these, uh, that it creates a dependence on a single country, and if, uh, and if the country fails, there is a global crisis. But now, uh, in our model, we limit the size of the crisis, which is a huge impact for us. And I want to go to my argument, which is um, creating unity and uh, creating peace in a global uh, way. So, um, let's go from the example of uh, European economic com uh, community. So, Germany, Germany and France was um, enemies before. They, uh, they, they had a rival, uh, and they had to come together because of economical reasons. Uh, they had an incentive to come together, and that was economy. Uh, so, um, they... they, uh, they and they were in the same union, they were in the same block. So they had to sustain peace uh, in some way. Uh, because they were in the same region, they were, there uh, was a higher tension between the countries. But uh, for example, think of USA and China. They don't have any incentive to solve their problems. And actually, um, more rivalry tension uh, exists because they have borders. Because there is a higher chance of attack. Because they can use their resources to attack that country. But for example, things like that. China can't attack Greece because it's logistically impossible. And USA uh, and Africa can't go in a war because uh, the supplies will die Point. in a trans-Pacific, uh, yes. Have you heard of planes and boats that can transport troops around? Yes, I, I've heard about <laughs> <laughs> 
both, but uh, this is not what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm saying that USA and Africa can't uh, logistically go uh, in a war because they don't want to uh, lose their resources uh, while attacking that country. Uh, and as I said, even if they have that tension, even if they have the incentive to attack another country, inter uh, and an intercontinental country, uh, there is more tension between countries which are uh, close together. And uh, the impact of this is uh, the countries will have more incentive to sustain peace because they don't want uh, war between countries. And uh, we are actually spreading a good message that two countries uh, with uh, rival, two countries which are enemies, can come together and form a unity um, which we are actually uh, separating in a global way, uh, spreading in a global way. Uh, and at, and in, uh, my second point is this creates a regional identity. Uh, so before, uh, society was more biased towards the other uh, the other country because they were enemies. Like think of uh, Germany and France. Uh, the they, uh, community, people in the community, was also biased towards the other people. And as a country, the relationships was not good. But now community ha has more incentive to be um, inclusive and to accept the other community. Uh, because um, there will be an economic trade, because there, uh, there will be products going from Germany to France. Let's go for, uh, with this example. Uh, the community will see more, uh, for example, made in Germany products. And they will start to accept the, uh, they will uh, go, they will accept peace and they will accept uh, that country more because uh, there, uh, the, because of the economic trade, uh, the other country will appear more in their daily lives. So the society will see that the other country, they can't form a good relationship, they're not enemies with the country anymore. So actually it creates a regional peace and a regional identity. The, uh, the people living in that country will, will internalize the uh, unity. Uh, so I also want to make a comparative analysis how, uh, how it's more advantageous in our side. Uh, so when the trade is global, as I said, the rivalry is not so apparent. They don't have any incentive to solve it because they can just uh, form an economic relationship, economic trade relationship. Uh, so they can just come together for their own economic benefits. But uh, now we have borders uh, because we are forming a regional trade. We have borders, so we have to solve it. Uh, other way, otherwise, we, we will have uh, more border tension. Uh, and also we have to form some political relations too. Um, and we are, uh, in this case, promoting global peace. Uh, and as my first speaker explained, we're also improving local business. Uh, and we're also decreasing the risk uh, of a global crisis. So because, all, because of all the reasons I've told you, I'm proud to you. in such a way that their economic model, the model of progress, can never succeed. Uh, I will uh, show you through my speech in the three main points of rebuttal why their world will be one with uh, where less money and development will go to poor nations. There will be uh, much less uh, possibility of economic progress in a nation, which will be the second point of rebuttal, and the third point of rebuttal, which will be uh, much more war and conflict in the world. After which I will introduce uh, our third argument, sub substantive point, that is uh, that global trade is a massive war deterrent. So moving on to the first uh, argument, there will be much less money moving into the uh, moving into uh, poorer nations. So f first of all, how will this happen? What we have is a, in our world that global, that powerful nations, rich economies, the United States, Europe, uh, what they do is they have factories and they have resources in these poorer nations. 
uh, how does this, uh, this is not exploitation of these nations, this is simply the fact that they will work for cheaper. Uh, um, what the, the Europe, Europe has gone through the same process a hundred years ago with uh, child labor and sweatshops, but through progress, through uh, money coming in and through development, uh, though without help, they have, they have gone and improved, uh, and, and improved themselves and now we have better standards. If we have more money going into these nations, if we have uh, money coming from the United States, uh, from Europe, uh, into these nations, buying products from them, in, uh, enjoying a free trade between the, uh, these regions, there will be no exploitation of these regions, and through 20, 30 years, there will be no sweatshops in China, there will be no sweatshops in India, what we will have is progress for these nations. Without, uh, without global free trade, and with their framing, which is that there is no trade between blocks, what happens is the fact that these nations cannot uh, sell their products effectively uh, to, uh, to customers because in their uh, regional trade blocks there is uh, usually a concentration of a, sim of a same resource. For example, in Central Africa you're going to have a lot of copper, you're going to have a lot of nickel. Uh, in Ukraine you're going to have a lot of uh, wheat and in uh, Sri Lanka you're going to have a lot of cinnamon. And there is no market, uh, there is uh, no demand in such, uh, in, in, there is no demand in such areas uh, for these products because there is an insanely, uh, insanely high supply. So what will happen is they cannot sell these products in their nations, so they will basically have a lot of possibility, a lot of uh, potential in their nation's economy, in their nation's development, that will go uh, unused. More which I will do in my second point of rebuttal. And then also, uh, and this, so basically the only way for these nations ever to progress forward uh, is to trade with, uh, with, nations, uh, with other nations that want to buy things from them. Now we on to the second point, which is uh, specialization uh, and the comparative advantage of these uh, of, of, of these um, of these areas. So what we have uh, in, uh, here is the fact that nations, you all have some predisposition that, that makes them more able to uh, enjoy a certain kind, a certain, uh, produce certain things better than other nations. And we have said in our speech, we have Sri Lanka, which, which is the majority of cinnamon, we have uh, Central Africa, which uh, sells uh, copper and uh, nickel and so forth. What these nations can then do with global trade is invest much more money into these uh, into these products. They can invest money uh, into maximizing the efficiency which, which, uh, with which these products are made. They can maximize uh, the efficiency of distribution to these other nations and they can get capital back into their nation. They can get uh, the maximum, uh, the maximum, uh, they will be the most, uh, the best at uh, making these products because they are the ones with the best predispositions and they will also be able to have the cheapest products making them the most competitive because they can invest more into these, uh, this one product or these couple of products that is specific to their nation making these products much more competitive which is again a huge part of, the, uh, which is again a way to grow this uh, nation, this economy, much, much further. Whereas in their case, they might as well just ignore these products, because uh, these uh, inherent advantages, because all of the nations in a, re in a regional bloc are most likely have very similar situation, similar economic, uh, similar economic situation, they're in the same area, they will have similar resources. So what will happen is these uh, great, uh, uh, these great uh, benefits that these countries have will never be able to be used only within these trade blocs. Uh, so this is why we see that uh, with global trade is the best way for these nations to maximize their profits. We go to the third uh, point of rebuttal, uh, which is that uh, which is about conflict. So they have set, uh, said that. Uh, these regional trades will prevent conflict because a lot of conflict is uh, between uh, bordering nations. Uh, giving us an example of France and Germany. Well, we also say, for number one, which I will most, more elaborate, uh, elaborate more in the third argument, is that uh, nations with just free, uh, free trade will also be, uh, be uh, have an incentive not to attack each other, much more than with their model, um, because in their model, two regional trading blocks do not trade, as they have say, stated clearly. So, what we have is one regional trading block that has absolutely no connection to another and then what happens is they have very little incentive to not attack them. Why? Because they can very simply and very easily uh, attack them without any, uh, because they're not buying anything from them and they're not selling anything to them. So there's no economic uh, connection, which means they're much more likely to go attack these regional blocks to take their resources, which only they have, uh, because they will not be able to access them in any other way because they cannot buy it from them as they can in free states. So we have a much uh, more peaceful solution to this problem. Now I will move on to the third argument, which is about how free trade is, uh, low free trade is more deterrent. Uh, yes, please. Do you believe that today America has the incentive to spread peace? 
America today has a much larger incentive to, uh, to spread peace. And second, if you, the wars in which America is currently involved, like, uh, like Iraq and things like that, as you have mentioned, are uh, a war on terror and as such have no relation with the economy. Um, and so, um, so the sort of global environment, global trade connects all economies. So what happens is rich nations have factories in these poor nations, whereas these poor nations, with their comparative advantage, their specialization, can uh, sell to these more uh, rich nations. For example, US China. China sells a lot of America, and America has their factories in China. So America is not going to nuke their Nike factory, and China is not going to nuke their customers. So we have peace between these two nations. There is no incentive for them to attack, which makes a war much less profitable. Uh, because both countries involved will have economic side effects from this. Uh, so more conflicts will be solved diplomatically because that is much greater cost to waging war. Economies are connected. And then sanctions only function in our side because if there is no trade between them and scenarios, even if we take them to their highest point, which is that they will be self-sustainable completely, then uh, sanctions are ineffective because they can simply ignore uh, these nations and uh, just and are trading between themselves, which will lead to more conflicts, again, having to be uh, ended in war, which is again a bear, uh, which is a solved by our case because of connected economies. So we, this house prefers global free trade because it will lead to less conflicts, ending in war, and make uh, uh, and make more conflicts be solved diplomatically uh, because of economic uh, attachments. Thank you very much. Today, ladies and gentlemen, the side of the opposition tries to defend the rights uh, of these big corporations and these countries which actually exploit weaker countries. And we, as side proposition, try to make, make sure to defend the rights of these regional governments which are less powerful than many of these uh, stronger ones. That is why today we will examine this debate in two clash points, which is what, what, whether this uh, proposition benefits the uh, region or whether this benefits and how it benefits the world. First of all, uh, I will start with how it benefits uh, in a global sense. <coughs> now, one of the points we made, which they do not touch at all, is how uh, our system actually would limit the size, size of crises. So we explained to you that if, uh, if something happened to China in, our, in the status quo, or to the United States, some big crisis happened, the entire world would actually be affected uh, and we saw that in, for example, 2008, which, which uh, the crisis in the United States actually affected every single part of the earth, uh, which you might think is completely irrelevant, uh, but now it is. And that is why we see that the crisis, which uh, the crises which are supposed to stay local, actually spread around the world and harm more people. Uh, and on top of that, uh, we talked uh, about how. Um, how this actually overall uh, causes some of the hege hege hegemony that exists today uh, to